Hey, Jeff Fisher here again. Um, I had a request that I tackle some slightly more technical concepts, so today I'm going to start doing that. Uh, this top talk is going to be about hashing, which is something which, while being a very involved area of computer science, is something that uh, would be of somewhat, in, of somewhat use to people who actually just use computers a lot and are interested in things like detecting uh, things like data corruption, but also how things like uh, security work in terms of how password data is stored and things like that. So, uh, now moving on to hashing. Basically what a hash is, is it's a piece of data that we can consider the fingerprint of some larger piece of data. This is useful for many things, but basically what it means is it allows you to take a large, uh, complicated piece of data and reduce it to a very, very small signature or fingerprint. Uh, you can use for identifying the data later on. So, what we use to do this is something called a hash function. You take some input data and the function turns it into what's called a hash code. In general, these things are not reversible. There's reasons why this is very important in areas like security and cryptography. Um, other, other specific areas, you might have a kind of hash code which can be reversed, but those are very, very specialized, and uh, I'm not going to be dealing with them very much here. I will refer to them a bit later, though. And usually these things are much smaller than the data you're working with, or more specifically, they're of a constant size. Um, you will have something which is potentially gigabytes of data that you'll bring down to, say, an 8-byte or 128 byte or something. Uh, very small signature. But then again, if you had a small piece of input as well, it would come out to the same size signature. There's reasons why it's important that this be effectively a constant size, though, for whatever you're doing. Now, Something which is important to realize about how this actually works is different inputs to the hash function can actually have the same hash code at the end, but each input has only one hash code. So what this means is two pieces of data might have the same signature, so or the same fingerprint, so you can't tell if they're the same actual data or not, but at least if you get two pieces of data which have different fingerprints, you can at least be guaranteed that they're definitely not the same. This is really important for some areas of optimization. So first of all, just some examples in terms of what do I mean when I'm talking about these hash codes. Well, there's some. I'm going to talk about two basic algorithms here for check for how uh, how these hash codes are made. Uh, there's something called CK sum, which is what's basically just referred to as a basic checksum. We'll talk more about checksums in a bit. But what it comes down to is you'll you'll pass in these basic uh, pieces of data like this one just says testing one, and this one testing two. And what the function produces is just these numbers, which are the, the fingerprint of that data. Now these numbers are the same, roughly the same size, no matter, uh, or, or they use up the same amount of memory, no matter how big the input is. But in these cases, you can see that while the numbers aren't completely different, they're substantially different. These are obviously not the same pieces of data, which is correct. However, we also can't tell how similar or different they actually are. Uh, something else which is very, very important in modern uses, and people use it for pretty well everything these days, is what's called the SHA-1 uh, cryptographic hash. So in this example, the output is much larger. And this is basically, well, there's a bunch of reasons, but effectively it comes down to the bigger the, uh, the, bigger the hash is, the less likely it is for you to have what's called a hash collision, which is when multiple different pieces of data have the same hash. Uh, if you have more numbers, you can just have more different numbers. So it works well, and this is important for cryptography. Um, as you see, these two, while they're still only very subtly different numbers, they're completely different uh, hashes, and this is important. So why would you actually be interested in this? What are hash codes used for? Well, the most obvious one, or, or at least the simplest one from a point of view of how to conceptualize it, is for fast comparisons of data. So usually large data is very expensive to compare. For example, if you had um, 100 files that reach a gigabyte in size and you got a new file which was one gigabyte in size, how could you tell if you already had it or not? Well, having to compare 100 gigabytes of data is a lot of work to be doing. Um, it's going to take a long time. Your hard drive is just going to be grinding away at this stuff for quite a while. Um, there's got to be a better way, especially because you know that, well, assuming those other pieces of data are already different, at most this could be the same as one of them. So why are you comparing it to 100 things? So hashes are used in that situation. What you do, like to use that example, and, and in the context of what we do with hashes, is what you'd first do is you could hash all those files ahead of time. 
So you had those hundred one gigabyte files, you hash them all down to something that's very small, like only a few bytes maybe. Then when someone gives you the new file, instead of comparing them immediately, first you'd find out what its hash code was, and then you'd compare that hash code to the ones you already had. Now you're only comparing a couple hundred bytes, which is really, really fast. You can do that in microseconds. So now you've immediately determined, is it possible that any of these are even the same? And usually they aren't. And if you do get the case where, okay, there is actually a collision, some of these hashes are the same, well, then you do the expensive comparison in those cases. But that way you're only comparing two gigs now, not 101. So, and this is, the reason why a final comparison is still needed is, again, multiple pieces of data can have the same fingerprint. And you can't tell if they're the same or not unless you look at them. Uh, this, for people familiar with the computer science or who are interested in the computer science background, this is exactly what is the underlying principle behind what's called a hash table, which is one of the more fundamental areas of computer science, a, a data structure that's used for a lot of things. And the theory behind it is applicable in many more situations beyond the, the data structure itself. So another area where we use this um, is in something called, well, in the area of data integrity. This is when you're worried about a file being corrupted, for example. Now you can't always tell that a file is corrupted because if the data, if the structure of the file has been corrupted, then yeah, you can usually tell. But if the, just the data inside it is corrupted, you're pretty much out of luck. You'll have no idea if that data is correct or not. Well, wouldn't it be great if you had some way of validating it? Well, we use something called a checksum, which is like I'd referred to in one of the previous examples with the CKSum program is, all right, when we save the data, we'll actually store the hash of it. We'll just calculate a very simple hash and store that next to the file. That way we always know if, say, we read the data and, well, now the hash code is different, well, okay, the file's corrupted then. Uh, something went wrong, something changed, we didn't update the checksum, so there's a problem. Um, this is used all over the place. Uh, the biggest area these days is with networking when you're connecting to the internet, all the data that you're sending back and forth to the internet, under the covers, uh, there's checksums being done on all the data to make sure that the packets haven't been corrupted while they were going over the internet. So this happens all the time. File systems and databases do this too, though. Uh, in, in terms of some of the literature, this is usually referred to as a cyclic redundancy check. The, the idea being it's a cyclic code, the checksum itself is redundant data, and you're using it to check the validity. Uh, the other area which is very big right now in terms of how we apply hash codes is in security. Now this kind of ap approaches the problem from the other side. It's not about matching something, it's about proving that something doesn't match. So a good example of this is you never want your password stored anywhere. Uh, when you log into your email or something and you're typing in your password to, to authenticate, it would be really bad if they were actually storing your password on their side and they were just comparing them because what if somebody breaks into it? Now they have your password. So in actuality, what they do is they use, the, uh, they use what's called a cryptographic signature. So this would be, this is actually what examples like that SHA-1 algorithm I mentioned earlier are used for. When you first log in, you will generate a password and they'll take a signature of it and they'll store the signature. Then if the next time you log in, you'll put in your password, all they'll do is compute the the signature again and see if the signatures match. They never actually store your password. They have no idea what your password is, which is also why if you ever lose your password, usually all they can do is reset it for you. They can't tell you what it is because they don't know. This is an important thing. This is a, a feature, not a bug. It's vitally important for security that people can't get at that information. And the idea is that as long as the hash code, the hash function that's used to generate the signature is really hard to reverse, like you can't come up with a password which would generate that signature, then you've got a very secure system. And, and examples like SHA-1 actually work that way. They are hard to reverse. It's hard to actually come up with an input data which gives you the, the output that you want, which would give you the, the hash collision, as it's called, that they want to be able to hack into a system. Uh, usually, the, in terms of the, the terminology used, often people refer to this as a message digest, uh, the actual signature itself. Uh, that's just the lingo used uh, when, when talking about security and hashes in the security context. So I hope that's of use. Uh, I'll probably refer to some of these ideas in future talks about some other uh, technical issues. 
but send me an email if there's any questions or anything else that you want me to cover. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks.